Hello and welcome to Raven's Realm Tabletop. Uh, we are going to be playing Crypt of the Everflame in using the Cypher system. Uh, our game master for today is going to be Brandon, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hell yeah. Hey folks, it's Brandon. I'm going to be your GM, MC, ST, depending on your preferred abbreviations therein. And like you said, we're going to be playing Crypt of the Everflame, a kind of Pathfinder staple adventure. Uh, in but I've converted it to the cipher system because I got to be I got to be fussy. You go, uh, Justin. Yeah. All right. Hey, this is Justin Bourne. I'll be playing uh, Julia Venley tonight. Um, she will be a. Or do we describe the characters yet, or we just say that and? Um, let's let's do the character in intros in like after this. Okay. Yeah, Justin Bourne, doing characters tonight. <laughs> On to uh, Kai. Hi, everybody. I'm Kai. I am very excited to start playing a system. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, y'all. So, um, Crypt of the Everflame takes place in the forest near near Mathis. And it's basically, like, not to, like, overdress it. It's, it's pretty standard fair fantasy in like a forest village type thing. So you are actually going to be in the town of Hassan. Uh, da, da, da. You move everyone to the scene. Da, da, da. Actually drop some tokens. There we go. All right. Where is my read? All right. The bells atop the tower of Aristil. So I don't, Aristil is like a nature deity. Um, the bells atop the t temple of Aristil hold their midday song, echoing throughout the quiet town of Kassan. As the peals begin to fade, the first of the townsfolk make their way into the square, dressed in black as if attending a funeral. They slowly fill the square, moving quietly across the cold, hard ground, their eyes downcast and mournful. After a few moments, a murmur passes through the crowd as it slowly parts to let Mare Uptal through. He leads the way with a tarnished silver lantern. Behind him, an old pony drags a cart laden with backpacks and supplies. Once he reaches the center of the crowd, Mayor Uptil stops and calls out to the assembled townsfolk. Once again, the winter wind blows through the Fangwood, marking the end of another harvest. There are wolves in the woods, howling at our walls, and serpents in our shadows waiting to strike. Just as it was 174 years ago, when Kassin himself left these walls to protect us, so it is today. Where are the heroes? Where are the brave folk that will venture out to Kassan's tomb and retrieve the flame to keep this community warm through another winter? And uh, yeah, let's do kind of the same pattern we did before. So Ryan, kick it off. This is a festival kind of ceremonial adventure that celebrates the town's history of uh, like in its early days, it was besieged by this vile necromancer and its founder, Kassin, defeated him and actually died defeating him and kind of brought about like the establishment of this town. Everything was kind of much better after that. So this is the 174th anniversary of that thing. And they have decided uh, they're doing like some adventures are actually going to go out and do that sort of stuff. So. Uh, your characters have all been pre-selected um, to do this, kind of meta-wise. We don't really we can make up that as we go of why you might have actually joined this, but uh, yeah, your characters would step forward. So Ryan, why don't you describe your character? Uh, yes. Uh, so what we see is uh, this uh, fair-skinned gentleman with nice facial features, very young-looking, um, uh, is in this uh, 
black tux, uh, but very colorful uh, arrangements. Uh, he's wearing this top hat with this uh, band around it and a flower on top, uh, and then a huge flower uh, kind of pinned to his uh, suit jacket and then a bright uh, uh, pink bow tie to match these bright colorful flowers. Uh, and around him are uh, some of his entourage. Uh, so he has an entourage uh, around him. He uh, you, you see him with with a smile across his face uh, as uh, he kind of bows to the crowd and says, uh, Yes, it is I, Bloom. Uh, you all know me as the town orator, uh, speaker. Uh, I was started out very young as a uh, town crier back when Kassin was, you know, doing his thing. Uh, but now it is my turn to seek adventure myself, and, and my entourage will follow suit with me and I am excited to retrieve the Everflame and then speak about how we did it together and then he like will take a bow a uh, big smile across his face uh, and then he'll like move motion towards uh, his fellow comrades uh, nearby uh, and point towards uh, the uh, Justin. So not character. only Bloom steps forward but, but also like your entourage of attendants and such yeah. right? And the whole the town definitely kind of giggles as the, like that happens because it's like this is not the rough and rugged adventurer type, right? Yeah, they're uh, so. like five twenty somethings, uh, very young. I I myself am around twenty nine, uh, but these are like 21, 22, 23 year olds at most. Um, but yeah. have joined me, and you know, uh, as, as as they do, they want to want to learn from the best, as as they say. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Justin. Okay, my character, uh, Jalia, uh, she's uh, wearing a like a golden armor adorned with like uh, lunar motifs all over it. Uh, she also wears a sash, like the, the Miss America kind of sash, but it's more for war. And she wears that around her uh, from shoulder to hip, like a bandera or whatever. Um, okay. She hears the announcement of the uh, the torch. Let me see what it's called. Give me one sec. Oh, the vital flame. Um, yes. And her eyes are like totally. They light up. She's super interested in this. Um, she let me roll to see if she trips because she's a little bit clumsy, but she has good luck with that. But that's kind of what's led her through her life. So I'm gonna roll that real quick while she runs up to the stage. She rolls a 19, so she gets up right up there and starts yelling. Um, you know. Uh, I guess talking or celebrating how we're going to take get this flame back for the town and starts just like being loud and kind of uh, abrupt about it. So it's like, uh, all right, guys, we're going to go and we're going to go get this uh, flame and we're going to make this town warm during the winter again and make things right. Make uh, our our county or kind or the town great again. You had to do it. You had to I do did. it. I did. <laughs> Some bitch. All right. Um, all right, Kai, who steps forward? Yeah, so hey, Gwyn Summerwind steps forward, and she's very much different from the other two characters. There's no regalness or proudness or anything like that. She seems actually kind of afraid to be, not afraid, but very uncomfortable being in, like, surrounded by this many people. She is a short, light, young woman that, that seems... She's not dirty by any means, but she's definitely not well-kempt. She has, like, sticks in her head to use as, like, hairpins. And she's got so many bags wrapped around her body that have her little herbs, tinctures, salves, anything that she could possibly need. And she's like, yeah, I'm here too! And she just kind of keeps fussing with those things to make sure that she has anything she possibly could need from her cabin before she goes on this adventure. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely like murmurs like through the crowd, like, oh, her, how'd they get her to do this? Like that sort of stuff. Um, the I'll general- mentioned oh, that sorry. my character also very much looks like Olivia Wilde. I don't know if y'all, you see that. Number 13 <laughs> from House. I see it. So, um, in the Cypher system, one of the things I should have had everyone do for their characters is go ahead and just lay out your, like, adjective 
noun verb. Um, so let's just go from the top, Ryan. What is your character in Cypher System stats? Yes. Uh, so Bloom is a doom speaker who is idolized by millions. He has an 8 in might, a 12 in speed, and a 16 in intellect. Um, you don't have to worry about the stats. That's, oh, that's kind of super. I think I think just that that, that rush, like that that sentence, kind of gives you an idea. Justin, why don't you go ahead? Okay, Julia is kind of the anti him. Uh, she is uh, a foolish knight who wears a magical sash, but she's more of a boxing knight because she's got strength stuff. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, Caitlin is an inquisitive adept who shepherds spirits. So just very much in a different realm than the other two characters. What was right, her name? Right. Hmm? Caitlin. 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 Some you could actually see it in the bottom left of your. Ah, I see it. Thank you. That's how I remember all the players' names in various games. Is I make sure I have all that keyed up. All right. No, let's see. Da, da, da. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned, but she's a she, her. All right. All right. The mayor says as he grabs a like a big ceremonial lantern. Who will have the honor of carrying the lantern? It's like this bronze contraption with uh, glass little shutters and stuff like that to keep out, like, wind. It is wicked. You can tell it has, like, a little oil, like, canteen at the bottom of it. That, like, a, a nice big wick is coming out of. I'll look over to Julia uh, and say, Ah, Julia, wouldn't you like to take it? You have the most experience uh, in, in fighting, as well as uh, you are quite strong, if I may add. So... I think my vote would be for you. Yes, I think that would be a great idea. I think I should do that. <laughs> and all my entourage is like, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Like, they're all like, just I, kind of saying, like, hyping it up. Yeah. So she puts it on no, her, you like, you've got a best ash. bunch of yes men on an adventure <laughs> with you. What a great idea. I was really yeah. ready for you to, like, portray Bloom as, I will carry this burden, like, takes the lantern and then immediately hands it to one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was prepared for that. Uh... Bloom uh, knows of his condition, and, and I think uh, I would be concerned to, to mess it up. Um, gotcha. Respectful uh, towards yes. the task. Yes. That's fair. Alrighty. So. Uh, do, do, do. Perfect. So, with the lantern distributed, the mayor once again speaks to the town folk. I present to you the brave heroes who will follow in Cassin's footsteps to retrieve the Everflame. Some of them may not return. The crowd kind of giggles. But I say to you that their sacrifice will not be forgotten. He looks at y'all with like a smile. Go, brave heroes, and do not return until you have the eternal fire. And with that, the mayor points southward, the direction of the tomb. The townsfolk begin waving goodbye with cold, with an attempt at cold, solemn looks. Like they're trying to take this here. This is very much like a festival, like a celebration and ceremonial type thing. They're looking serious, but like straight up, like they're about to go have funnel cakes after this, right? Like it's, it's kind of one of those sorts of things. Are there any, is there any food like around this area? Yes, there's definitely, like, tables in the back and stuff like that. Is there any on the path of when we're exiting? For sure. Okay, Kagwen's gonna try and take a funnel cake, because she does never comes into the city and doesn't know how to make it herself. Right. So she just, like, wants one, because once a year she only does this, but now she's leaving before the festivities, so... She right, she's missing out on, her, on the best part of the whole thing? Exactly. She, <laughs> she being subtle about it. She's not, I wouldn't say she's being subtle. She's just, tr she's not like trying to do it in front of everybody, but she's not going to like sneakily shove it in a pocket. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think you can just make your way around and people will kind of see and, and kind of giggle. And it's like, 
Yeah, one of them's like, hey, the, the, you know, the pecan pie off to the side. You, that one. That'll probably carry best too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Um, yeah. So, y'all hit the road. The forests in the area are, you know, just very, like, this is large oak trees mixed in, you know, uh, it's not super high elevation, so you don't have a lot of cold weather type trees, though the weather, the the, the winter does get cold, Um, but it's not really an evergreen forest. It's definitely more of like a a typical um, leafy green trees. Uh, you're walking through the path. You, generally speaking, have a map. Oh, yeah. And the, the mayor would also have given you a map. And um, as we walk through, about an hour in, uh, I will begin uh, speaking about an anecdote about the previous uh, year's Everflame uh, gathering and uh, the heroes that got it. And I'll, I'll be trying to... Um, I'll be trying to uh, train ourselves in, like, the, the I guess, survival and, and being able to, to figure out, follow this map, um, as well yeah. as, like, avoid any dangers. That's, that's kind of, like, my goal here. Um, throw, throw an intellect-based rule for me. Sure. Uh, we're going to call this one Difficulty 4. Ooh, that is uh, it beats Difficulty 4. I got a 12. There you go. Right on the money. Um, and if right I on the money. use the anecdote, I it is two intellect points, so I, I have one edge in intellect, so I still take one correct. So I should. And this be... is kind of piling on the anecdote because it's it's kind of also like a knowledge based check is what I'm doing here. Okay. Um, what you are actually quoting is whenever they actually dress up this whole ceremony and stuff like that, a lot of times they send folks ahead to the crypt to put up fake traps and all kinds of like happy like things like that to make like fun little stories. And so there'll be like like pillow covered like things will like fly out of walls and stuff like that. And so it's a lot of cutesy stuff. So a lot of your anecdotes are definitely going to be related to that and kind of sharing and like, oh yeah, one time there was like this spike trap, but it was pillows all at the bottom. So just make sure when you land, don't land on your ankle. Um, and that kind of thing. Like that's probably the kind of anecdotes you might come up with is like how to safely fall like five foot onto pillows or something. Yes, and there's this one trap where it arrow shot out, but it had a, a blunt end and it didn't actually hurt. And so uh, just be wary of that. Uh, don't be afraid. Uh, and and then like uh, my entourage would be like going ooh and ah and just like kind of just like supporting what I'm saying. Um, yeah. As as I as I talk about anecdotes for about a minute to complete. Heck yeah. Jalea partially listens. <laughs> hey, Gwen's not listening at all. <laughs> concentration a little bit here and there. Gets distracted, but it's, it's mostly hearing what you're saying. I think Kay Gwen's like really, because we're walking through the forest, which she considers sacred land, like she's spending a lot of time making sure that Bloom's entourage is like walking on the path that is already been like blazed so that she they're not like stepping on mushrooms or like messing with the fairy circle or anything like she's trying to keep them on the path and like herded in a direction uh so okay. that they're not just like breaking things and she's so sure. she's like really not tuned into what bloom is saying at all she's really just like she, in her opinion like the forest is like her domain and these people are like going for some glorious thing but in reality she just wants to make sure that they don't mess it up like they did last year (laughs) totally all right and i have this like brainwave where i want to talk about the entourage and how you can use that narratively but i think i'm just gonna let that free flow um you've got these five level one helpers right yeah um I, I think the way we'll do that is like helpers and stuff like that are allowed to basically have a mod, like one thing they're good at. Okay. Um, you don't. What I'm going to say is like we can just make that up on the fly, so they don't even have a name until it's time. Like, hey, Jason's real good at something, right? And then we just note it down as like, yes, one of your five is that. Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah. and the, what they'll count as is assets when you're trying to do something, basically. Got it. Oh, I will say that once we get about two hours into the hike, I don't know how far the crypt is away, but like once we get like way outside of the boundaries of the village, yeah. my dog Pebble will meet them. Oh, that's great. Dog named Pe Pebble? Pebble? Pebble. What kind of dog like, is it? Like, uh, it's like a very like wolfy mutt dog. So like one of those dogs that like escaped the village and like definitely like a dog escaped the village bred with a wolf and then this pup wasn't as strong as the other wolf pups and she kind of found it and took care of it that way. It gray, brown eyes. That's that's what I want to say. My wife looked over and like pointed at your background and was like, <laughs> Sophie had background. Hell yeah. <laughs> Owls. All right. So, um, yeah. Is it a friendly pup? Like, would they come up to me or would they just stay very loyal and serious? It's very much a guard dog in the sense that she lives alone in the woods. Um, but it's not unfriendly in any way. It's probably just not going to come up and ask you for, like, head scratches. Or tummy rubs. <laughs> so the narrow path winds through the raking claws of the trees, now bereft of their leaves, which crunch loudly underfoot as you all walk through. Up ahead, a fallen tree blocks the path. And suddenly a trio of snarling humanoids leap up from behind the log, all with greenish skin and fearsome tusk, bellowing vulgar challenges. Uh, bellowing challenges? Uh, did, oh God, I have to use our voice. Um, did somebody say a challenge? Yeah, it's definitely like, they're, they're like standing out there and they see you and they're like, come on, pretty boy. And then they're like, got like big ass clubs and shit like that. And they're ready pointing at a bloom. And then another shit. one's definitely like, they sent a bunch of girls to do the jo job this year. And they're just standing in the road. What do y'all do? Um, I, I would recommend that you leave and get out of the path so we can continue our mission. Unless you really want to be challenged. The three of them are all just kind of like look at each other. And they just bust out laughing. Uh, she's going to spear one of them. <laughs> out of the Zero. way. Yeah, okay, we'll say okay. that they pop out within like short distance. So that be might? It might no, or wait. dex. That's your call. Okay. Might or speed. You speed. get to choose. I get the choice. Always this. Let's see. Did it go? It did not. It's difficulty two. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. There it is. Sorry. Yeah. Difficulty two beat. You catch one of these right in the chest and he falls back. You hear the clunk as the spear goes right through him, crashing into the ground. Um, like, it thunk. Right Wait, into the dirt. He impaled himself in his own spear? No, that was your spear. You hit him. Oh, 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 I don't have a spear. I, I do hand to hand. I mean the, the wrestling move, the spear, where you kind of like tackle him. Like Goldberg. You just exploded my brain. I had no idea what you're talking about. Like, I was like, <laughs> no, I yeah. mean, not like a spear like D&D, &D, a spear like WWE. Like, yeah. yeah, it's a wrestling move. I should have known. That's my bad. <laughs> That's on me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he's seriously just uh, tackling him to kind of like show his uh, prowess in uh, combat. All right. And just so how strong you're a good he is. ways away, but you're actually within good. You you're within range. You can do that. Okay. Um. <laughs> so. Um. No. So the way it works. So you notice how if you drag your token up to them, yeah, you get into the green zone. So uh, that's a short range. If you want to move a short range and take an action, you have to make a speed roll, uh, difficulty four, to do it successfully. 
If you fail, you don't get the action. You can only do the move. Okay. Fifteen pass. You, you, Barely. You nailed it. You got it. You're good. <laughs> so you move up there and you spear the center one. And uh, the the way I'm I'm playing this out is not to like really hurt them or anything else like that, but just to be kind of a brute with them and kind okay. of like show it off that way, like and kind of give them a heads up, like the the little nod, like what up? Yeah, yeah. So go ahead and roll. So you did your speed roll to actually maneuver. Now you need to make one to hit, and you can choose speed or might because you are a unarmed combatant. Okay, I throw out a five. Ooh. That's not gonna oh, do oh, it. Oh, I get two though, right? Because I have dumb luck or carefree. Oh shit! You're right. I forgot you had that. Oh, but I rolled the wrong one. But it's. Let's I see. mean, I just need to see the d20. It doesn't really matter what it is, if you, unless you're like doing effort. No. So just a 17 flat. Yeah. Every time you roll for a task, roll twice and take the higher result. That is such stupid good ability. Like, it is. It's, it's like, really good. It just, uh, I know how it's going to get count canceled real quick. <laughs> but yeah, um, he rolls, a, she rolls a 17. Julia does. So you like rush through, you bolt and like throw this thing to the ground. Go ahead and make a difficulty three intellect check for me. And you are you are not good at this. So it's actually hey, 15. Oh shit. You notice that as you like you turn around to like punch the next one, basically. And so you've thrown this one to the ground. The contact, you know, it didn't really feel that heavy. And as you threw it to the ground, it kind of dissolved in the corner of your eye. So you're like ready to fight the next one. You look to the side and you're like, what the? And it just kind of evaporated in the mist. The one you're I hit evaporated? Yes. Let me get the combat what? tracker up so we can actually start doing this for realsy. Because uh, I feel like you just kind of open things up quickly. So, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, right, Chris. There is an extra character that I don't have to be throwing in. Kai waiting on that initially. Sorry. I'll win him. Not a one. Hey. Okay. Uh, initiative is a task, Justin, so I will give oh. you that. It basically, anytime you touch a d20, it's a task. Okay, so do I roll one more d20? You do. Wow, that's so good. Yes. Yeah, but I had to sacrifice. I get, like, no psychic uh, defense at all. <laughs> oh, intellect. Yeah. Hmm. I rolled a 14 for there you go. combat. Let me... Blah, 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 blah. Next time we have to do this, can you, if you right click on your character in the combat tracker, can you re-roll initiative? Is that a, is that an option you have? No, I, I mean, it was just one dice. That's all I had the choice. Uh, the first time I rolled it was just that and there was no other thing. Well, yeah, we can't change anything on the tracker. Okay. That's why I was wondering. Like I have the ability to just hit the re-roll button. So maybe I'll do that next time. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out the best way to work in the fact that you have it. You effectively have advantage on every single thing. Um, Kai, what's going on? Did Kai, uh, sorry, did Kay Gwen also see the weird thing? Every, I'll have y'all, y'all are far away, so we're going to call it a difficulty four to, to notice it. So if y'all want to throw into In, intellect, intellect? Yep. I'll throw it. No, I'm going to throw it. No. Nah, y'all didn't see it. It's probably behind that fallen tree. We just see him dive behind the tree and then no body coming up. Do these people seem actually aggressive? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's definitely a read of the situation. Uh, there's not much that Kagrin can do about that, but uh, she's gonna 
So I can move short distance and then I have to do a speed roll if I want to do an action also. That's right. Okay. Well, this. That is short. So then I do a speed roll. Mm hmm. Ooh. Not 20, baby. Hey, major yeah. effect. Uh. Yeah, so what do you, what were you planning to do with this kind of run and gun maneuver? I was going to come in and then scan, because then I know what the level and stuff is. Yeah. So I was going to do that move, which is an action. You can scan an area equal in size to a 10-foot cube, including all objects or creatures within that area. Scanning a creature or object always reveals its level. You also learn whatever facts the GM feels are pertinent about the matter and energy in that area. So I think what happens is you activate the scan kind of as you're running so that when you get there, mm -hmm. you still have an action to take. So you immediately see that area and you understand these orcs are all illusions and the dude casting it is behind the rocks over here. Oh. Behind what rocks? Sorry. Rocks oh, to these rocks. your west. Those over there. Yep. Got it. So scan is actually an action. So I don't know if I can do anything else. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm rewarding that 20, is you oh. get, basically, you got it for free. Got it, cool. So I'll still mark down the point. It's two, but I have one edge. Um, lovely. Yep. And then she's going to do what the only thing she knows how. She's going to blow gun, try to blow gun him in the neck. Yeah. Um. <laughs> what knowledge does Scan give you of the effect? Like, I could give um, you, like, a, this is what happens. It just when says you... what the GM... You might learn that the creature standing before you is a mammal with a small brain. It just says, like, any... It's, like, hurting about the mammoth and energy in the area is the only, like, specific language it says. Cool. Yeah, it's very open to detect magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you definitely know that, like, just doing something like that or just throwing, like, a pebble at them will make them dissolve. Oh, the thingies? Yeah, so like the blowgun is fine. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna blowgun this thingy. That was my character sheet. Hold on. I'm not adding anything to it because I have nothing to add. Ooh, rolling hat. Oh, okay. <laughs> For now. For now. Yeah, you take out the, the dart goes like right through like the thing's forehead and it kind of pops like a bubble. All right, Justin. What is uh, what's Julia doing? Uh, Julia is going to. Let me see if she's smart enough to recognize what's going on. Oh, she can is, you no, say that? In my opinion, can Cake one just say punch it? <laughs> um, she got a one, so she's just going to go straight up and try to kick this other thing's ass. After okay. seeing the one disappear in front of her and one pop, she's like, I. Oh, I totally got this. And then she um, goes to give an uppercut to the other one. Okay. Yeah, throw it. And so we talked about how you can basically move in that immediate area. Or yeah. we talked about how if you move to a green, it's like you have to do some stuff. But if it's just within the blue, that's free. You can just do that. And there's no oh, yeah. opportunity attacks. We don't have to worry about positioning or flanks or stuff like that. Hell yeah. Well, I rolled a 16. I don't think I need to roll the other die. Okay. Or should I, just in case it's a 20? Yes. Yeah. That 100%. Uh, 16. Same exact number. Whoa. I kind of see her reaching down for the uppercut, starting out like from the dirt and then going up <laughs> if he, if she tries or is able to. Right. So you're going to move. You're going to uppercut this thing and kind of come up on it. Yeah. And uh, it's just going to it's going to move with your punch. But there's none of like the shark. It looks from a distance like you just uppercutted the shit out of this dude. He flies into the grass like and then just kind of evaporates like a. Uh, like a like a NPC character type thing in a video game or something like that might. 
and, and trying you straw right now. <laughs> she just doesn't understand what's going on. What? What? Um, you can come out now. I know you behind the rocks. And he would like walks out. It's very much like one of like the village like hedge mage characters. And he's like, great job. That was a cool illusion. We uh, you know, it's funny, but like three years ago, I actually had one of the. We sent, you know, and he described like uh, some healer, like meek guy from town. He's like, I had him running and crying in the hills last year or three years ago. So uh, I wasn't expecting just to come right out of the woodwork with the uh, the spear maneuver. No one ever suspects the spear maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, I think I can get back to town and still get some of that sweet dessert. Y'all have a great time on y'all's journey. The pecan pie is good. Noted. Or, uh, noted. That's what Bloom. Bloom. Uh, and you, it, like, uh, so Bloom, would, uh, in the moment, uh, uh, as soon as the spear happened, kind of froze up, uh, it kind of grabbed um, towards his chest. Oh, uh, uh, and then it just happened so quickly. Uh, it happened in a flash. And as soon as it ended, uh, he just... Uh, shakes his head. Oh, uh, uh, yes, great job. You did wonderful. Ah, and then he, like, takes out a book, kind of writes down, uh, Jalea the spear, and Kegwin the eye, and then, uh, writes that in his book, and kind of meets up with the rest of the party up ahead. Um, great, yeah. great illusions. Uh, it looked rather real. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. He's like walking back with like a hustle. He's definitely trying to get back in, in time for it to get some snacks. Yup, yup, yup. Good luck. Have fun. And just <laughs> runs. All right. Um, I guess I would think that Julia is kind of upset that she didn't get to fight. Uh, is there any way I can get a she can or is there any way I can get a song? My heart is just so fiery. I need something to cool me down. Oh, yes, uh, Rainy, and then I'll, like, point to one of my entourage. Go ahead, sing them a, uh, sing, sing them a song. Uh, and Rainy is, like, uh, he uh, <laughs> is really trained in, um, we'll say, uh, the lyre. And so he, like, strings it across, and uh, he also has good vocals. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can you roll for performance for him? <laughs> and then we'll, uh, we'll see if how would I do that? Just intellect? Should I just we roll? don't. We don't need to roll for this. Okay. okay, you don't have to roll for this. Just RP it, I guess. Yes. Uh, can Kagwin use hedge magic to make his lyre out of tune? Yes. <laughs> okay, she's doing that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, like... he, he's uh, he's probably a little shaken up from the orc, so uh, forgive him. He's a, a bit shaky, and I like look at him. And what say, was his name? Uh, rainy, rainy. Yeah, it's definitely like trying to like fuss with like the strings and like get it all tied in just right. Um, uh, it's like sorry, I don't usually have this kind of problem. As he's like trying to get it all going. It's okay. It's okay. It's your first time. Not no one expects perfection every time. So uh, just just give it uh, give it a little work uh, as we continue, and I'm sure you'll figure it out. All right. And yes, Julia, As, even with the bad music, is still calmed down from it. And gave her something to think about. <laughs> we all travel the rest of that day, kind of walking south, uh, and get to a lakeside spot. And it's kind of the designated, this, this is kind of where you camp on that first night. It's, it's basically a day's travel between, and you have an overnight stay. Um, the lake is, gosh, the Grey Lake is what they call it. Did you say grey or great? Grey. Uh, and as we, as we gather around the campfire, I'll, I'll look to, uh, uh, 
Jalea and Kagwin say, Do you know why they call this the Grey Lake? The Grey Lake, it's called, right? <laughs> uh, yes, that is where oh. we are right now. This whole time, I thought it was great. Oh, why is it called the Grey Lake? Oh, it just has a hint of grey in the water. If you look in, um, it is said to be from the sediment that is at the bottom of it. Oh, I thought it was because of the Grey Lady that's standing over there. The Grey Lady? Not this one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look around. Oh, uh. Yeah. Don't Actually, I have it. a read for it. Sorry. The the trees begin to thin, revealing a field of short green grass that leads to the shores of a wide, calm lake, reflecting the overcast skies above. A dense fog hangs over the center of the lake, obscuring the far side. Near the shore of the lake, a dark form lies next to the water. Oh, I was totally joking. <laughs> there is something. <laughs> oh, it, I was just looks... trying to scare them. Uh, oh, look there like is something lady. over there. Yes. Um, yeah. What do y'all do? Does she look threatening? There is a dark form on the ground over by some rocks. <laughs> Very threatening. <laughs> I would like to uh, kind of just take a moment uh, and try to understand it a bit, study it, uh, see uh, what is it doing here. Maybe maybe wait a bit to see if it's just here, you know, relaxing yeah. or if it's here lurking. Um, yeah, throw something for me. Sure. Uh, I'll roll intellect. And that is a 13. Okay. Beats difficulty, what, three? Four. Four? I can math. Um. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely it's like you look over and you realize like that's like a person. Like there's a someone is over there collapsed on the ground. Oh. Oh, Kagwan will immediately go over then if he communicates that to us. Uh, yes, yeah, she she doesn't look well. Uh, she's on the ground and uh, like I won't be the first there. I'll I'll be following behind. Kagwan will go over and like make sure that she has all of her tinctures and stuff with her as she goes over. Yeah. So uh, uh, whatever. Aaliyah, uh, Jalea will uh, follow behind you and just kind of make sure there's no trap. Well, not any traps. He can't. She can't see traps, but just to make sure you're okay. Okay. And then uh, as you get close, uh huh. Oh, I, I was just gonna say as as we get closer, if, if medical attention is needed, um, I'll I'll mention that Sunny uh, is is really great and has uh, he is working to become a physical therapist. The village needs a physical therapist. You know, people get hurt, adventurers come in, <laughs> wounded. There was one yeah. gentleman who had a uh, farming incident where he uh, pulled his back. I feel like probably most of your customers would be like ox, oxen type things. Like you're actually a physical therapist, but for like farm animals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's, but good. no, you're not that. You're you are a physical therapist trying to operate within that town. Okay, mm -hmm. that works. That's, that's and his name is Sunny. Is sunny? Yeah, oh. that's Sunny. Okay. Is good. I'm imagining with your entourage and stuff, you're like operating like a medieval yoga studio. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it we'll doesn't really it make, like it doesn't really seem right, but it's like, why not? I kind of see it. I could see decibels and dollars being important with the yoga and just kind of like Mr. Business with yoga. Anyways. Yes. Anyways. Um, as you approach, the waterlogged corpse is sitting on the edge of the lake. Large bite marks are out of its like thighs and you can see like bang marks. Prob the, the mouth has to be at least like a foot across. Something big killed this thing. The, but the body uh, is a uh, male in kind of foresty bags. It, I mean, frankly, it looks like normal clothes to Kaguin, right? Um, mm -hmm. You can see, like, he's got a dagger in his boot. And it's like a sack off to his side. Uh, and he's got three water skins, kind of, that he's got Ooh. carried. Yes. Uh, okay. I'm going to do my ability question the spirits. Okay. 
Uh, first, I must summon a spirit. If it's a spirit of the dead, you must have personally known the creature, have an object that was owned by the creature, or touch the physical remains of the creature. So I'm just going to summon this dead dude's spirit. Heck yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's something I need to roll if I just spend the I point. I don't know that it is. So let's see. Did I, if it's... Because it says if the spirit responds, but... Can I put it in the chat? Is there a way to do that? But I guess you can see it. Yeah, I'm looking at it, but yes, is there a way? I don't know the answer. No, I don't think there is. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to fuss over it too hard. Yeah, I think you just win. So you pay that uh, intellect point. Mm -hmm. And it's like kind of almost emerging from the body itself. This like, right, like fear deep in this in this guy's eyes. Who calls? Hey, Gwen, Summer Wind. We found you here. Are you? What happened? There is a giant serpent in the water. Be careful! And he's like like looks towards the water and like memories of its death like come back to him he's like be careful and he's 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 in panic reliving his death do we see him or is this all in their world or dimensionally or this whatever is, this is all there you see the ghost of this dude backing away from the lake how are you in the lake why were you in the lake? I was, I was given water skin duties by the other guys, and uh, I just was coming here to fill up the water and get back. That's all. The other guys, and they left you? I, they must have seen what happened and run off. Run towards where? What were you trying to do? on your quest. We had just looted the, some crypt out in the, the hills. Hmm. Is it the crypt of the Everflame? Looks at you like recognition in his eyes. It was. And how long ago did you pass? Five days ago or so? Four? Time. What is time? No, it's going to be vague. It's not going to know time. Mm -hmm. And how big was the, the serpent? Serpent? And like, he gets like fear in his eyes. Massive. I, alarmingly. How is that here? I think it makes... He's, he's just kind of guffawed by the whole thing. Well, and I'm uh, sorry that you died. But you are no longer in harm's way. Do you dismiss him? Uh, one, one second, uh, Kegwin. Uh, could you just please ask him... Uh, if he has any uh, last words or a message that we can take back for him. Or where we could take his body. Yes. Oh, I'm not one for moving the bodies of the dead, but I will ask him. Do you have any living relatives, family, people that you have a message for? In your name, of course. Uh, Nodwick. My, my name is Nodwick. My friends live out in the hills north of here. Uh, though I don't suppose they will take a message. Okay. Farewell, Nodwick. I hope you have a pleasant journey to the afterlife. He kind of fades away. 
actually. Okay, let's not go near the water. Uh, I'm ready for a challenge. I'm Unless not you're about that big of a challenge. Nature. No, no, no. We don't mess with nature beasts. It has already taken one life. I say we just leave it alone. Uh, but we should bury this body before someone with more nefarious means does something to it. Good call. All right. So you all um, going to try and get a whole dog and bury that body? Yeah. Can your can your yeah. dog and your extra people do this? Oh yeah, I'll tell uh, I'll tell Pebbles to dig. I'll point to a spot and tell Pebbles to dig. Okay. Mm-hmm. For for this Pebbles, isn't his first you... rodeo. <laughs> what do you want Pebbles' like main thing to be? Do you want it to be like a perception check style bonus, like it's a primary like thing that it can add to? Yeah, I think it's very much like an alert dog. That's like. Cool. More than protecting me, it's that will alert me to danger. Sweet. Make sure we'll just have to remember that when we have those sorts of things in, and it makes sense in context, you'll get that sort of asset. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Y'all uh, go off and <laughs> dig a hole for it. <laughs> the dog helps. Uh, <laughs> probably definitely sees other folk digging and, and wants to help. Where do y'all set up camp as the sun is setting? Oh, I can do a thing on the table. Does this work? Yeah, it does. It's getting there. Ooh. Ooh. It's getting dark. I'm um, scared. I think we should, you know, set up camp someplace high, uh, someplace dry, and uh, someplace maybe near Nodwick. Uh, I wouldn't want to venture off too far away from where we are currently. I'm sure there's okay. a clearing near... You or... want to sleep next to a corpse? Not directly next to it, but, you know... At least a hundred yards away from the body. Yeah. I mean... It's not I'm... It's not good to mess with the dealings of the dead, and I've done enough of that today. Um. Did you touch him? Yes. Yeah, we I had spoke to, to Gross. him. Gross. I assume once it gets dark... Who would light? Who would have a light of some sort? I probably would have a light on me. Uh, and just okay. I uh, like this little matchbox, and it will help um, build the fire. Sweet. Yeah, yeah I say we make camp away from the water and away from the body. Maybe somewhere where there's rocks between us and the water and a clearing. All right, sorry. Yeah. Didn't use the voice. <laughs> so, like, over here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so y'all will set up camp there. Um, y'all doing anything particular for watches? Um, Honestly, it doesn't really matter. We can just high-level yeah. this, because you got an entourage and, like, a wolfhound. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would actually uh, take watch uh, and let my entourage, you know, get adequate rest. They're young; uh, no. they need as much rest as they can. So I, I don't mind taking watch um, during the night. Okay. Aquin will also okay. take watch with Bloom. Julia will cover from like the late early morning to like waking up time. Sweet. Uh, I'll ask uh, during uh, our watch with Caitlin. Oh, you you know much of the forest and about uh, the places and the people and the not creatures. really the places, not really places and people, nature, people, the way things interact. I would say, but I don't really like villages. I've never really spent time there. This is my first time really traveling outside outside of my home in the woods and the village for the festivals. But I am 
I like to learn as much as possible at, about whatever I see. Oh, yes. But I, uh, make sure not to anger the spirits. I, I as well. I'll, I'll be cautious uh, around around that. I'll, I'll follow your lead when it comes to uh, the spirits and that sorts of things. Um, and I'll follow yours when it comes to people. You seem to have a flair for, for them. They seem to like you. You have brought a bunch of people with you. <laughs> Uh, and, and, um, I'll look over to, like, the, the sleeping entourage, and they're kind of all, like, cuddled up next to each other, like, keeping warm <laughs> together, like, they're, like, really tight, um, and close, uh, and, and I'll say, uh, uh, yes, uh, they, they've been around me since I was, uh, just, just coming up in, in popularity. I, I, it's, it's not that I'm good with people, it, it's that I... Similar to you, you like to learn. I like to learn about people and who they are and how I can tell their experience um, and what they've been through and make it sound great and wonderful. And, you know, I, I've told many stories of adventurers going to the Everflame and coming back uh, with the bright flame in hand, victorious. And, uh, I guess this time, I, I just wanted to give it a chance for myself. And uh, I, I look back at, at, at like the, the huddled up entourage. Uh, and I just want to enjoy any moment I can with, with them. Time is limited, as you know, and as life occurs, you know. What, what do you... You speak like my grandmother. What are you? Are you 70 years old? You've uh, plenty of life <laughs> left. Uh, I I wish that were the case. Uh, and like I'll reach down to my chest like where he was grabbing earlier. Um, I froze up. Uh, there, there's um, been a thing that has, has come of me. I, I don't know what it is, the doctors. N neither Sonny, no. Um, of my ailment. Uh... Other doctors uh, tell me they, they have no idea what's going on. And it, it has just continued to worsen. They, while I am spry and young, I internally feel as old as ever. Uh, and I'm, I'm not one to share this. No one in the village knows. Uh, and as someone who is not really close to anyone in the village, I don't mind sharing this with you, because something that I've... a burden that I've had to carry for many years. Uh, do you know why I love flowers and carry them around? Is it because they smell really good, but then they die once you pluck them? <laughs> uh, in a way, yes. Uh, I think that I, myself, uh, feel very connected to the life of a flower. They bloom, and eventually they lose their petals. And so I'm coming up to that point in my life. And They also help bring life to so many things. Flowers are the beginning of fruits. They help make bees make honey with their pollen. They, um... They do lots of things. They help to spread and regenerate themselves, so if they're for the next season that they come back. A flower isn't just itself, it's what comes after. Uh, you got it right on the head, and then I'll like look over to the, the entourage and say, I just hope uh, that whatever happens uh, to my fruit or my... Uh, new beginnings or new flowers that they are able to do everything better and then i'll like uh you see his uh bloom will like take a moment um wow i, I uh that was the most i've shared with anyone about i won't tell anyone on. don't worry i uh appreciate your um your uh, confidentiality, Kegwin. Um, who knows, maybe you will be the one burying my buddy. 
And on that note, I'm going to do a group GM intrusion here. And what that means is everyone will get an XP. Although, I know that y'all have zero XP, so you can't actually buy your way out of it. But someone could spend an XP to cancel it out. Anyways, uh, group GM intrusion. Everyone go ahead and mark one XP. As you hear howling in the distance and movement in the trees nearby. I will go wake up uh, Jalea. And I'll like make my way over. Uh, uh, Jalea, there's... Uh, huh? Huh? Sorry to startle you. There's uh, just some noise we've heard. Oh, you, I was just uh, meditating. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You were <laughs> sleeping. It, it's fine. That's what we were watching. Oh, oh. Yeah. I only need four hours of sleep, and then I just meditate. But I, I just... Oh. I think I was sleeping, though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what's up? Uh, we, Kegwin and I uh, heard howling. Yeah, let's uh, be a little quieter. Okay. Just a little bit. Uh, what is Pebbles doing? Pebbles is probably at that sound, active, and looking off into the northeast. Okay. Well, if it's a pack of wolves, that's not great. Um, I would say we should move away from the dead body more, perhaps. Um, and just try to be quiet. If they come here, we be big, but we don't egg them towards our location. Okay, so you're going to try and like make sure the campfire is out and kind of get quiet and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll let you do that with speed or intellect if you're going to go around and kind of like snuff things out in a way that like, you know, stunts the sounds and, and stuff like that and make sure everything's like covered up. Like, I'll let you choose whether you want to use like a speed based role or an intellect based one. So oh, I think Kagwin would do an intellect based one. Okay. Um, In the sense that I think she's like taking mud so that it like stops the stop smoke from going up and like doing things like that nature that she's learned like it's not the fastest but it's the most effective and like ridding our yeah. trace throw it I like that Ooh, almost a 20 I should have added to it and I didn't you didn't and it's not quite enough as you see glowing eyes in the distance to the northeast growls uh, Pebbles is absolutely growling back. Teeth guard. What are we doing? Do we hear the sound from the north, either eastern direction? Yes. If I uh, can, I would like to say, uh, brace yourselves, everyone. We got this. And then uh, I will try to encourage everyone on defensive tasks. Okay. Um, for your group? Oh. Yeah. Or for everyone. Entourage? Oh, for us too. Yeah. All allies within short range. I'm not very good at defense. I just know how to be offensive. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, they will uh, also attack you. So just, I I'll let you know. Uh, and I'll like be ready to call out if uh, like a bite's coming to the left or right or trying to help anyone who who's about to get attacked or will get attacked. During this and just a heads up, my armor is probably pretty loud still. I'd imagine if I'm moving around or anything. Did you sleep in it? Yeah, I always sleep in my armor. I'm practiced in so, it. <laughs> I've already got the combat tracker set up. They're on it. Um, and I've got everything kind of marked out. One of the things y'all blatantly did was you put out all of the lights. Um, so I'm going to absolutely say, like, unless y'all have some ability to let you see in the dark, you're going to be impaired on any rules you make after, like, initiative. It ain't. You win either way, so I'm not going to worry about it. Hey. What do y'all do? Okay. Uh, Jalea... I will was... say that um, Bloom, Bloom was able to do that in Courage, though. Huh? Sorry. Jalea? Oh, yeah. Um, so we're getting in defensive poses, so I'd like to kind of get a little bit of distance between me or me in front of them, like right here-ish, and then kind of like prepare an attack, because I really don't know where they're at yet. 
Okay. Or do we know where they're at now? Like you can genuinely hear where they're growling in the distance and stuff like that. And, and Pebbles is absolutely pointing at them. And um, well, you can't see their glowing eyes because y'all haven't lit in the light. So, um, but yeah, you genuinely know that they're in the northeast. Okay, so I take out that defensive pose and I just kind of like, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm gonna move you out there, and I, I think. Are you trying to invite it so that they attack you rather than everyone else? That's the idea. If I can get between them, go ahead and make. There's actually a move for that. So go ahead and just make an intellect based uh, roll real quick. This would go great. Sixteen. Yes. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> For having low intellect, I am rolling really well with intellect. Darting through, you hear like you you don't see the thing moving at you, but you hear it. You feel it as it like tries to make a like a like a passing bite tackle at you. What do you do? You know, you need to make a speed defense roll. So I'm used okay. to like uh, Dungeon World where it's like. You, what do you do when I wait for you to say I get out of the way? But in this, it's very much you take a speed. Ooh, that's not good. But it's not a one. So, um, oh, but you roll mm. twice and take the higher. Oh, yeah. Do it again. God, that's broken. 17. <laughs> um, Yeah. So one of them is going to try and like take a bite out of you. And you... you easily move out of the way as you like hear it charging towards you another one's gonna do the same like you're gonna have three more of these so let's see them hell yeah so like and does it get one ease uh due to what i um you do but it's canceled out by the fact that it's dark gotcha okay uh, Great. so sh should i just roll 2d20 uh just type it out instead of doing the might thing and all that or not might speed uh you can I don't know if there's a configuration setting for this ability. Let's see, additional pull, tag, da, 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 hide, custom sheet, power shift. Oh wait, put them together. Yeah, so you would do, 17. what you would actually do is like, uh, do you know how to do this in Foundry? Hmm. Using the square brackets? Oh man, it's been a while, yeah. So that's what you would do is that right there. There's not an automatic way to do this, so uh, that I am aware of. Uh, I'll look into that afterwards. But uh, did you? Do you want me to throw that in chat somewhere so you can see yeah, how to do it? Yeah, I was trying it. I'm gonna throw it in our, our Discord real quick. Like that's what I type. Okay. Sweet. Do you still do the roll or no? No, you just do that. Just that. You can actually even label it out. Like you can interject it with text and everything. Like that. Boom. Hmm. All right. Give me two more. Okay. Boom. Last one. Oh, one more? Yep. As four of these charge out towards you. And you are fending these things off gracefully. Fuck yeah. So there's four of them coming after me and I avoid, I just yes. like, awesome. And it's getting harder as there are more of them. Um, it is harder and harder, but gold higher than a 12. So you're, you're going to, but hey. yeah. Hey, Gwen, what's going on? Uh, she doesn't like this. <laughs> uh, oh, that's a good question. What is she gonna do? I think... She... I think she's gonna try and move, like... just to the like into the forest a little bit this way just to like kind of get an angle that's not including 
Jolia and throw a net. Okay. In her mind, it's better than a blow dart because she might hit. Like, if she hits her with a net, it's not as bad as hitting with, like, a sling. Um, That's fair. Maybe. Even though it is, like, a weapon net. Bad. Um. I think in this context, it, like, legit might be worse, but sure. <laughs> this is how she's thinking. She's like, oh, maybe I can get multiple in the net. But that's how it works. Um, what do I need to roll for the disadvantage uh, thing? You don't. You just It's just going to increase the difficulty, right? Got it. Um, so I know their level, and I know what you got to roll. So, like, yeah. Okay. Let me know if you're putting some effort into it. No. Yeah. Because she doesn't so... think it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Ooh. I saw that one. I saw that one on the die. It's like ready for it. 13. Oh, 13. So they are. That hits. Yay. That's what you, that's what you needed. So, uh, well, 12 is what you needed. So uh, the net flies over this one here. Mm -hmm. It is still dark. But. Okay. Yeah. But now all Boom. of the physical actions are hindered, so at least that's like one that has to like try to get out of it instead of attacking. Exactly. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll ask Kegwin. Uh, should I turn on the light or or should we keep the lights off? I mean, wolves can see in the dark, so maybe do that if you don't have a better plan okay. of like stabbing one. Yeah, I'll uh, turn back on one of our, our torch lights just to just help us out a lot, see a little bit better. Okay. Um, I'll stay where I'm currently at. Uh, and uh, would that be like the action that I have? Absolutely. Yeah, well, lighting the torch, yes. Okay. Yeah, that would yeah. be the action. Uh, and, and yeah, uh, question for the future. For a cipher, is if it's a cipher that's based on an attack, can I use like both? Like, could I use a cipher and then attack with the weapon that I'll be using, or no? Would it have to be use a cipher. Oh, then... is the cipher like like a weapon oil type thing? Uh, in a sense, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the effect is for the next day, each time the user strikes a solid creature or object, the attack generates a burst of electricity. Are these the ciphers from the first game? From last session, we generated yeah. them. Oh, we get to keep them? Yeah, those you oh. got those. I will restore mine then. <laughs> well, when you... Okay, your turn. You're going to use that restore mind? Oh, no, no. I restore mine. Like, I, I got rid of them. I archived them because I didn't think we were carrying them over into the first game. Oh, yeah, you absolutely are. Okay. You got them. So, um... Brian, to answer your question, I think I would let you do that. I would let you kind of use them okay. and, and just, attack at the same time. Just curious. In that, in that context. Okay. All right. Julia? Okay. Um, she's going to... Do I have to ready anything for wings, or do I just get to use the cypher? You like... just use the cypher. That's your action. Okay. Oh, Okay. So I can't grab them and then fly up as an action. No, I think I think that one would be it. that would be straight up your turn. Okay, okay. Um, then in that case, uh, do you remember what the cipher form was, by the way? What? Do you remember what it was, like a scroll or a potion? Oh, um, I don't know with fly. I know with the temporal viewer. I think that's. Like some kind okay. of goggles. The wings is uh, a powder. Okay, let me note that. But yeah, uh, you've got four wolves attacking you. What are you gonna do? One is incapacitated or netted, right? Restrained is the word I okay. would use. Yeah. Mm, restrained by net. Um, he, she will go and um, kind of wrestle the middle one to kind of stay between them all, but just to kind of uh, kind of get in a headlock and try to rotate the head to kind of throw her on, throw them on the ground. Okay. With one of the wolves. Does that make sense? Yeah, I dig it. Okay. Throw something. Uh, Mike. Yep. 
Could I just do the 2d20 thing instead of the might thing, or is there an advantage to the might thing? If you were doing effort, if you were doing anything fancy. Okay, okay. But even then, yeah, the 2d20 thing actually works either way. You might just straight up macro that. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Ooh. Uh, good rolls. Which one are you hitting? The restrained one or one of the others? The one in the middle, like this right here. Okay, noted. And your damage is as a medium weapon? Uh, let's see. I think it counts as a medium weapon. Let me double check just to make sure. Plus one. No, no, no. It counts as a medium weapon, yeah. So when I fight, instead of a light weapon, it's considered a medium. Sweet. And combat prowess should always come into effect, too. Ooh, yeah. So you just dealt five damage that wolf as you uh, twist it around and kind of body slam it. So I did four damage plus the one for the combat prowess. That's right. Excellent. Yeah, I slammed this one down to the dirt and then just kind of restrain him. All right. And that's my turn. I'm going to, I'm going to have them all attack as a group since they're all attacking the same person. So uh, go ahead and make a speed defense roll here. How many? So, dang it, nothing hits. Yeah, he was looking for a 16 or better, and it was going to do, uh, like, 6 damage, so. Oh. Wait. Yeah, you can clump. In this system, I can just clump them all together. Uh, awesome. Kagwin, go. Okay. She's very shocked with the network. Um, <laughs> she's going to say exactly where she is. And I guess she's going to try... Uh, they're all the same damage. I just, uh, she's going to pull out the blowgun again. Okay. And go for it. She doesn't have anything better to do. Um, because her ciphers are about being hit, not hitting things. Um, yeah, she's going to blowgun the one that's in the net, because then she can get the net back. If, okay. Um, Oh, second 20 of the day. Oh, wow. Do you want to just take that forward damage or do you want some kind of major effect from this? Sure, some major effect. What happens? Like, what is this? Is, you got a blowgun dart. Like, is there, there's nothing like, you don't mention poison or anything like that. I'm trying to think of like, what happens? It, you get the result of a 20. So we just got to like rationalize what just happened. Like, yeah. you, like, thunk what this thing between the eyes? The blow gun dot, I don't know. Um. um. No, I think it, like, straight up, like, you blow gun, like, oh. it doesn't hit, like, in an eye or anything like that. It, like, gets a tendon in, like, one of its front paw, like, one of its front legs, and mm -hmm. it, like, can't move as it's, like, you've literally disabled that arm or that, that leg. Right, so it's just like yelps and is like in this net and just can't do anything. Oh. Perfect. Bloom. Uh, so I will lift my top hat up as I put the torch like kind of on the the poster wherever we had it. Uh, and underneath it, there's this uh, wo wood rune plate that I take off, uh, and then in it, uh, like kind of at the top deep in is like this dagger and so as i pull this dagger it begins like electrifying itself um and i'm going to walk up towards uh, oh right here uh and then the one right in front of me i would like to attempt to not stab him but use the electricity from the dagger and kind of use it as a taser to incapacitate um, Ooh, okay. The, uh, wolf. I, I, nice. Hearing about like the spirits and and the woods, I, I just think this this might be another spirit of the woods, and so just to be safe uh, and not 
harm it too much, I want to try to like tase. Yeah. Okay. Um. So what Just do speed I check. Roll? Speed check. Speed or might. Your call. Uh, I'll say speed in this case. Got a 13, um, which beats difficulty of four. Uh, and the shock attack is level four, which adds two damage. And my dagger is a light weapon, uh, so that's two damage, so four damage total. If I eat. You absolutely do. Okay. Um, four damage, noted. We're getting back to the top of the round, Jalea. Hell yeah. Okay, um, on the one that I have on the ground, I'd like to start, like, really pulling, twisting. No, I think I'm going to throw an elbow into its ribs. Okay. Yeah, so she uh, twists from the head. Uh, she has him in the headlock and then kind of twists while holding him in the headlock and just elbows him again. Or just does okay. a really hard elbow. All right. Fifteen. Your rolls are great because you get to roll twice. <laughs> it's, it's, it's permanent broken. advantage. <laughs> really. Um. Yeah. We'll we'll look into this, but there are downsides, uh, and they will come. Yeah, up. and they are very big. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you definitely are able to elbow drop on this one. So, is it the same? It's a different one, right? Uh, the same one I had in the headlock. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like this kind of backward pull into a elbow. You, thing. I mean, it is passed out on the ground in front of you now. I let go, finally. Yeah, and at this point, they're no longer group attacking because they can't really, they don't really have the ability to do that. So one's going to hit, go for it, try and bite at Julia. And the other one's going to try and bite at Bloom. I'll need speed defense rules from y'all. Uh, right. uh. Ooh, ten. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I keep. I don't know why I keep clicking that. I was trying to. Shoot, uh, you only needed a three or better. I didn't really. Thank you for that. For I was the... just getting the background order. I didn't know I'd get a 20. <laughs> um. Um. First of all, how did you do that where it printed the ability to chat? We needed that earlier. Oh, um, I just. I think my alt key was stuck and I was alt clicking it and it was that's what what it was posting. There you go. Okay, there that's how it. we do it. <laughs> okay. Good hidden feature. <laughs> it literally says it if you mouse over it. Yeah. Oh, oh really? <laughs> that's in the Definitely tooltip. know how to read. Ah. Oh, yeah, but you only needed a nine or better to, to evade those wolf attacks as they're like trying to get at you. Uh yeah, they miss, and it's back to the groups. Darren, what are y'all doing? Um, I guess I'd like to kick the other wolf. <laughs> Why's it got to be animals? <laughs> right. Um, I I would just like to try to continue to to tase the the, the wolf yeah. in front of me. So um, I think they're gonna. I think they need a, like a morale check at this point. Okay. I'm going to do a, a stars without numbers style morale check real quick. Oh, oh yeah. They're, they're definitely at this point, like they're losing. They're kind of getting hurt and they're going to start trying to scatter after this. So I think uh, if mine just decides to leave, I'm not going to like hit him on the way out. I don't know. OK, OK. No parting shots against them. Yeah, I'll just let them go. If they decide to flee. Fair enough. All right. With that, uh, Kind of goes back to quiet, and uh, soon the crickets and everything else start picking back up. What do y'all do? 
Well, um, I I think I've got the next shift. If y'all want to go to sleep, I could just sit here, or maybe if you have like a minion that knows how to wrestle, I can I could totally practice wrestling with them. Wrestling with what? One of uh, what's Bloom's? Crew. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, Jason really likes to wrestle. Uh, he is, is the athlete out of all of us. Uh, and so yeah, I'll I'll wake him up and I'll I'll go over and wake up Jason. Uh, hey, uh, Jason. Uh, uh, Jalia wants to uh, need, needs a watch partner, so I just volunteered you, and uh, uh, they also uh, are are really good at, at training and, and physical stuff, and so are you. So I just thought it'd be a good fit. Hell yeah! The chat raised a really um, a really good idea for countering uh, situations. Ooh. If you ever, for some reason, get double ones. It's turbo not good. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That makes the sense. The reverse day effect, yeah. Alright. Well, y'all will get through the rest of the night, and the morning will hit. Y'all, I assume you're not wrestle practicing for the rest of bedtime? <laughs> no, in fact, we get to know each other really well, and Jason and I really, like, are connecting, and then we decide to start wrestling. <laughs> you do the weirdest shit, dude. I do. <laughs> uh, in the morning, I'll ask... And, it, and it's great. And it's great. That's not a criticism. Uh, I understand. I'm, I'm, I totally get it. It's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the morning... We just bonded on Overwatch and just started wrestling. Sorry, I cut you off like three times, right? No, no, you're good. You, you will get through it. Uh, I, I'll, just, I'll just ask in the morning, uh, K. Gwyn, uh uh, about the wolves it'll be like is, is that normal in in the forest do wolves I, i've heard you know of heroes fighting wolves but just wondering if that was another illusion or if that was real or, or, or what your thoughts oh, I, I don't think that was an illusion wolves don't generally attack people per se that's not very normal um Especially as we pose no threat to them, maybe we're in their territory, so they got a little aggro mm -hmm. in that sense. But it could be that Pebbles is here and he's part wolf, and him being in his territory, lone wolves, they'll want to scare them off, but they didn't seem to attack huh. him, so I'm not really sure what was going on in that aspect. It wasn't usual behavior, but who who really can say what is in the mind of a wild creature? Well, that makes sense, and I'll, like, kind of jot notes in my notebook. Alright. So... All ready to... Uh-huh. I uh, just, just want to, like, regroup with the group and say, so when I was talking to Nordwick, um, he said that his group had just looted the Crypt of the Everflame. And he wasn't really sure of a period of time because it's a spirit. They don't really like after off afterlife or the in between definitely does not work as how we perceive time. Mm -hmm. Um so we don't I don't know how recently that was, but if they do send people ahead to like do whatever, I do wonder if Everything is as it should be on this adventure. Uh, that is a fair point. Uh, go ahead, uh, Jalen. Uh, I was just going to comment that it, it feels like normal to me. I don't. I don't know. It seems very, very normal so far. But my awareness isn't the best. You think well, we should? investigate where Nodwick was from, the hills north of here? Is is that in the direction of the crypt, or would be would this be going off our off our way, off the path? That is a good question. Let's consult the map. He's definitely off your path. <laughs> and are we, were we able to tell if the body was fresh, or had been there for a while, or Brand new. No one really inspected it that like yeah. that before burying it. Five days? That's what he said, right? He'd been dead for five days. I then amended my statement saying no, he has no idea what oh. time it is. Oh that's right, that's right. So um 
I guess we should just keep moving forward with precaution. That's all the best we can do. All right. Yeah. Yes. All right. Y'all move on. So as y'all pack up things and get going, the trail leads ever deeper into the Fangwood Forest. Through a twisting maze of trees and confusing ravines, as it tops a small rise, a broad valley spreads out before it, the opposite side of which looks, to, looks like a writhing serpent. Yet between the two lies a steep hill, sloping down into the valley. Cold rain starts to fall, and the rock and mud become slick and treacherous. But you can see down in the base where the entrance, or, or kind of where the crypt of the Everflame's entrance is supposed to be. But you can't actually see it from here. It's kind of around like some curves. Um, yeah, how do y'all descend into this valley? Uh, I'd like to think that me and the, the pup are kind of leading the way, but I don't know if the pup is, is always going to be on your side. Uh, Pagwin. Oh, real quick. Because y'all rested for the night, we need to talk through recovery rules, because I think... I was going to ask about that. Yeah. Um, Go ahead and just roll a d6. You kind of get to burn all four of them, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. So... Because uh, you only use like one point, right? Uh, yeah, I, I use two. Use two, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you would get all of them. So, so the way recoveries work is you have your one action recovery, you have your ten minute recovery, your one hour recovery, and your eight hour, effectively, your your resting for the night recovery. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the spirit of the rules in the book as written is kind of use them in order. I don't personally enforce that and kind of let you use them out of order except for except for the eight hour rest that one's like literally like your end of the day rest like from a oh. mine says 1d6 plus one what does that mean that's because you are a level one character you get to add that plus one uh rec to your recovery rolls and that's a stat yeah. you can increase as you level up so i would get seven points back if i needed to fill them If you roll a six on a recovery roll, yes, you would get seven points back to distribute to your pools. Got it. Okay. All right. Okay. Did I get my net back or is that gone? Nope. Uh, you get, or rather, yes, you get your net back. Okay. And pop it back. It can be daytime again. Uh, hey. Not that we're actually on this map or anything, actually. So, you've got this kind of treacherous hill. There's like a light rain that's been falling since about the time y'all woke up. Uh, what are y'all doing to get down into this valley? Mm -mm. Did we just climb? I'm always up for a challenge. I'm not sure my dog will be able to do that well with the climbing. I could just strap him in my sash behind and he could just kind of ride on my back. Uh, true. If, if you're okay it's with it. It's not like a sheer dog. cliff. It is just like a treacherous downhill um, mm -hmm. in the context. The dog is probably going to be better at it than you are. Okay. Oh, I had a question, Brandon. To my cipher says for the next day... Would that mean it's gone yeah. now? Even if it wasn't no. used? No, I'll let that go until kind of the end of, I don't know, some kind of dramatic point. Okay. Okay. Um, Mine says the same thing for the next day. And then yeah, I have I'll poison resistance for the next hour. I feel like that would be gone. Yeah, that one's absolutely gone. Okay. Um, and then I haven't used that one. Okay, lovely. Uh, yeah, I say we just take Traverse it carefully. really slow. Yeah. All right. Let's do some speed uh, style checks to traverse this. Sixteen. Ooh. 
Oh no. Oh. It begins. Oh. There's always a downfall. Roll a, another d20, just like a straight d20 roll. Me? Yep. That wasn't the damage I take, is it? <laughs> <laughs> that would be rude. <laughs> <laughs> you, As you're going and trying to traverse down, you slide and skid down and it, like flop right into a tree. You're going to take four points of damage. That comes from might? It does. Okay. Okay, not great. I probably could have modeled that more guys. as a GM intrusion. <laughs> yeah, actually, I am going to like retroactively say that that was actually a GM intrusion. Everyone's going to get one XP for it as the rain started to fall. Okay. And so, as a doomed... Uh, as a doomed individual. Oh yeah, you don't get that. I, so I, I shouldn't be getting those, because uh, it no. says, yeah, on your character. So I don't know if that is different than. The group. Oh. It says specifically, every other time the GM uses GM intrusion on your character, you cannot refuse it, and you do not get XP for it. Oh. Wow. No, I think Brutal. for group ones, then you you do get experience. Okay. I still get awarded. Getting some XP every other time. All right, y'all start to approach the Crypt of the Everflame. You see an archway of stone. An archway of stone is set in the side of a small hill at the bottom of the valley. Moss has overgrown many of the details, but one is still quite clear. The keystone of the arch is carved with a symbol, uh, with, a, with a flame symbol, stylized rune in the center of it. Beyond the archway is a darkened tunnel that leads to a pair of massive wooden doors, one of which is slightly ajar. A pair of horses and a trio of ponies lie slaughtered next to the archway, each corpse still tied to a post set into the ground nearby. A swarm of flies hangs lazily in the air above them. I would like to use the temporal viewer and see what happened here. Ooh, that's cool. Let's see, how to, did that work? Oh wait. There we go. Did that work? No. Alt click. Does that work? On his name? Trying it. There it is. Hey, yo. Yeah, so this is the rune plate one, right? Yeah. So you're going to like tap this and this only happens to you, but your eyes kind of glow with like a haunting like green light. And you kind of rewind things back and you see a cadre of skeletons had come out of the door. And had... And these horses were tied up here. They come out of the door and just start clawing. One of them has like a short sword and just slashes its belly open. Uh, another one like goes and tries to like strangle it. And the horse like kicks it and rips it in half. But it like manages to grip onto it and the horse like crashed into the ground. Um, another one stabbed it and the horse fell on it. And is there any other details I can see about skeletons? Are they just like, are they armed or are there any kind of like uh, symbols or anything? Well, my character would probably wouldn't be observant to all that because she's kind of dumb. Oh. <laughs> okay, really, really, really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Minus four, <laughs> I can't like 
Minus four intelligence. <laughs> rolls. Um, or not rolls, well, just intelligence. To the pool capacity, but yeah. you, you are basically like impaired on all of those attempts. Um, yeah, you definitely don't get any of that whatsoever, but you do see like like skeletons came out of the tomb and attacked some horses. Okay. And then the ones that survived that kind of went back inside. So it was a tablet that I, I used to see? Yep. Like okay. a rune, stone rune tablet. Like the energy has now expired from it. Okay. Got it from some Verusian merchant that had come through. Okay. Um, so she brings out the temporal viewer. It's a plate looking thing. So she starts to put food on it and starts to try to like dress it up. But then all of a sudden starts to have these like visions of what happened at the, uh, to these horses. And um, she then goes and explains. My God, these were killed by skeletons. A lot of skeletons killed these horses, and they did it without any kind of... They did it very callously. It was terrible. This Slow. was only a couple of days ago, by the way. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Two nights ago. Okay, and it was only a couple nights ago, but... God, it feels like it just happened. She starts, like, breaking a little bit. Maybe roll. Let's see. Yeah, she's she's tearing. Tearing up. As the, <laughs> as the power kind of winds back. <laughs> yeah. Do you go further into the past? one year right I, yeah yeah you think she has a choice do we do we want to say she just doesn't have a choice she's she's just on this trip i think with her it's probably she doesn't have a choice because like controlling magic controlling these kind of things not really her realm at good. all yeah. yeah 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 she's definitely like seeing that and that all kind of plays in reverse um you see them arriving to go and like put up traps and things and it looks like there's like a, just a group of like four or five villagers that had come in here to really start setting things up um and it keeps going and there's a lot of silence and then two months ago some bandits had come in here and they went in but they didn't come out well um, but the ones outside watching heard screams and they left. That, that's wow. So there, there was a, there was a camp here and then there was thieves before them and they got slaughtered too, but inside the caves. So none of this is really seeming like a great place to be right now perhaps we should get into a more discreet position um did you tell us everything that you saw everything that uh i saw yeah within my Is limitations skeleton still under the horse Ooh, good question what do you do it's there are you all approaching? It's, like this is, I assume this has all been yeah. kind of from a distance. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna approach to see if the skeletons there. Yeah, and absolutely, this is like a jump scare type thing. Like as you get close, like it is still trapped under that horse, and it like, it's trying to like get out to you, but it's stuck. But there are, uh, dead, re dead, if you will, uh, skeletons around too. And they're trying, they... They are... Uh, they are de-animated, I guess would be the word, <laughs> right? Okay, so only the one under the horse is animated. Yes. And the rest are un-animated. Un yeah, I guess the question Double dead. is, do I touch <laughs> the alive one? Or do I touch the dead one? Here, let me make that choice easy for you. <laughs> I think the one that's aggressive is going to be very, like, not helpful. So I'm going to touch one of the doubly dead skeletons <laughs> and try and uh, question the spirits. Let's see if it works this time. There we go. Mm. It's a long one. Mm. Doesn't even fit on there. Yeah.
What? You could attempt to physically wrestle the spirit into submission? <laughs> if it doesn't want to answer my question. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Or I can try and blackmail it. That's very funny. Um, yeah, I'm going to touch one of the doubly dead ones and say, what happened to you? If it anything happens. Would it remember yeah. it as a skeleton or whenever it had flesh on the skeleton? Yeah, so what emerges from that skeleton is an armored warrior. Um, kind of dressed up in heraldry and all this sort of stuff. Who calls? He looks off into the distance. Uh, Kagwin Summer Wind. He looks... He looks around. My rest disturbed yet again, though this time not in so horrific a way. All I want is answers, and then I'll happily let you rest for the remainder of your time in the afterlife. I will tell you whatever you need to know to defeat the evils that are coming to stir. Yes, what is happening in the crypt? Asar has risen, and he is starting to wake his would-be... His, um... He's awaking the knights that defeated him in the battle of Kassan. Sorry, I'm taking notes. <laughs> uh, A A S A R, by the way. K A S A R. A S A R. A S A R. Okay. Um, do you know what his purpose is? I suspect he's here to finish what he started in his uh, revenge on Kassan. But I do not know much more than that. Who, who or what awoke him? I did not see that. Was it recently? I guess you don't know what time is. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a weird question to ask. Like, uh, yeah. Dead, dead dude. Uh, is there anything we can do to help? That's all it has to be put down once and for all. The powerful necromancer was defeated by Kassan all those years ago. Though they appeared to have been friends at one point, the rift between them grew too large. Okay. Thank you for your time. My apologies again for the many times your rest has been interrupted. Thank you for your service. Uh, God save the Queen. <laughs> he like evaporates back down into the skeleton laying out in the field in front of the crypt of the Everflame. Okay, so we got a dead necromancer that has brought himself back and is trying to kill everyone. Oh, well, it's interesting. Uh, uh, do we know what happened to those that were supposed to set up this hole? ordeal because normally the townsfolk send people did they not return did we did we hear about that the bandits didn't return yeah did you also say that the townspeople didn't return justin you might be muted oh, or are you just no. thinking like I'm doing the thinking. wrong big thing <laughs> i'm doing the yeah. thing thing I'm like, did I? I think, uh, I don't remember anything about the townspeople setting up things. I just knew that there was an encampment there and then Thebes before that, or the same person. I couldn't really. I thought it was the townspeople came to set up. Mm -hmm. Bandits came and didn't leave, but I don't remember what was said about the townspeople and if they left. Yeah. What That's happened generally to my vibe right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm not going to give you an answer because I kind of like it. Like, it's, I think that's perfect for, uh, 
or Talia's uh, interpretation and re- <laughs> like time playing yeah. backwards and, and interpreting. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, in any case, it's I'm gonna assume seems... that they're all in there and probably dead. Uh, because it's better. It'd be great if they're alive. Hey, miracle, happy, hunky dory. But if, like, we should assume they're dead. You know, like, don't get our hopes up. You know, um, which probably isn't a good sign. It most likely means that if we do encounter traps, they're probably real. So maybe we should like mentally compartmentalize the fact that this just got a little bit more dangerous. Yes, uh, there won't be any pillows or blunt arrows. So um... no. Just skeletons that tear apart living horses and ponies. A necromancer back from the dead. We Bandits should... Bandits? That may be running around in there? Let's, uh, let's take it one step at a time. As in the steps of en- entering? Uh... Different? Yes, unless... You all think we should turn back empty-handed, which is... No, I think we should try and learn every little thing we possibly can Mm -hmm. from outside here before we do anything else. Is there anything else that we can investigate? Uh, We talked to the dead bodies, we went back in time. As (laughs) y'all discussed this, I think... uh, uh, Julia... um, or Jalea... Um, goes to the door and kind of tries to peek it open a little bit while y'all are discussing not opening the door and trying to learn everything. The door is, the, is actually literally a jar. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is partially then he ju- she just peeks in, kind of like throws her head in, kind of peeks. Okay. It's pitch black in there. Hey, um, I can't see a thing. Don't yell I in th- there. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yes, I, I think there, we like, should. Rune? Are there like runes or anything on the outside of the crypt? Mm-hmm. Like this is like a crypt. It, it is some it is. Type of like temple shrine thing. Like is there information that we can get just from the building itself? It is. I mean, there's the symbol of like Cassin's like paladin order. Hmm. And I assume, I'm assuming that the knight that I talked to was one of Asin's paladins. You didn't ask that, but I didn't yes. ask that, but I was, yeah, that assumption. was the player assuming, not the character playing the character. Um, but I do have a question. But then that does bring the question of. If he, if the skeletons were, quote unquote, the good guys, why the fuck were they ripping apart horses? Um, and just so you guys know, it does say that normally more than three questions aren't answered, which is why I dismissed it before asking a trillion things. Mm. Um, I did have more questions. I just didn't want to like exploit that too much. Um, Generally speaking, I, I I am more lenient whenever you summon things that in, are inclined to be helpful. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. Um, Got it. But, yeah. but yes, not a million questions. Like their time, their patience, or whatever it is. Like mechanically, we need to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was specifically someone who would be helpful. Got it. Yes. Okay. Do we know, based on like the history of being in this area in this town, we have this crypt, which is the symbol of Cassin's Hall and has the ever flame in it, symbol of the victory over Asar. Do we know where Asar's body was left versus where Hassan's body was left? Throw intellect for me. Um, can I do my Addy thing to it? How do I Your do Addy that? Your thing. As in, like, can I, like, put things towards it? Like, effort? Ye- yeah. Effort? Yeah, so you're gonna, like, I think you alt click on the die, and that brings up the little menu that shows that. Yeah. Base difficulty. Effort to ease task one level. Okay, got it. Okay. Ooh. 
Kevin. Thought I did that because it was a bad roll. Yeah. Um, but now beats difficulty three. You know that Asar and Kessen were both interred in here. Okay. Hmm. That makes sense why Kassan's paladins are here while also saying that they witnessed Asar waking up. Okay. So maybe we just need to make wake up Kassan and they can like duel it out as like dead things, you know? Ghost fight. <laughs> yeah, ghost fight. Ghost fight. Um, that's literally, I think that's literally a Pathfinder build that Griffin <laughs> Roy ran. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways. Um, well, we are at the entrance to the crypt. It is 9.07 here, and I think that means it's late AF East Coast. Do you want to call it here? Sure. Yeah, I think a that's good, a good yeah. Yeah. Stop in next point. episode. Oh, all right. But, uh, we'll have to think of a way to include Chris next week when he joins us. I've th I've got some ideas. Okay. Ooh. Cool. 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 Do we get any uh, end of session XP, or that's not how the system works? Do you actually get like a checkpoint XP? In this case, you get kind of checkpoint story based XP, and you get uh, GM intrusion XP. Uh, mm -hmm. So the waypoint here is you ma actually made it to the Crypt of the Everflame, one XP. Everyone gets. Hey. Hey. So we um, should have three. I think you have three, three right GM now. Three GM intrusions yeah. plus this. Okay. Yeah. I should. I should have really done like double that in GM intrusions, but we were kind of getting the hang of things and stuff. And I didn't yeah, want to slow down the combat. Yeah. yeah. Understandable. We what don't start right. with one with, XP. So we're starting. What happens with um, sorry ciphers? You have like, to find others used... to replace them. Oh, you have to find them. Okay. Item, like items. Um, all right. So uh, this has been Raven's Realm tabletop playing the Crypt of the Everflame uh, as a part of the Cipher system. Um, Brandon, uh, what do you got? Sure. Hey, I'm Brandon uh, at the BWT on all of the various socials. You can also find us on the Raven's Realm tabletop Discord. Look forward to it. We're running a West Marches campaign that is starting to, uh, I don't want to say heat up, because the first snows of winter are starting to fall. But they know that a massive army is coming in the spring. So, uh, yeah, we've got that happening. Uh, for season, So this whole thing is an exercise for learning the cipher system for Season 3. We hope you all will tune into that as we do a kind of mashup of the cipher system with the content generation of Worlds Without Number, or Stars, Stars Without Number. Without um, all right, Justin. Hey, this is Justin. I write a lot of the music on here for intros and stuff, and I have my own album out um, on Spotify. If you look up Project Born, B-O-U-R-N-E, like the Born Identity, same thing. Um, you could also, if you like, all our music is on bandlab.com slash mixsushi3. Um, yeah, you could. I have a whole playlist there for everything that we I've ever contributed here. So if you ever want to just hear a whole playlist of that, you can find it there. Uh, that's pretty much all I got going on right now. I'm, I'm trying to get back into more of an acoustic recording, so that's going to be cool to get back into. But that's all I got going. How about uh, Kai? Uh, yeah, hi. Hey, I got everybody. It. Thank you for listening. Uh, I played Kay Gwen. Um, I'm not on formerly known as Twitter. Um, I won't say the new name. <laughs> I'm trying to find a different place to call home that isn't Reddit. So, um, and I'm never giving out that username. So <laughs> tune in next week and maybe I'll have something to plug. Uh, and, and I've been Ryan. I played Bloom, the doomed speaker. Uh, and you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash ball and right. Uh, do we have any other shout outs? Oh, shout out uh, to uh, Tabletop RPG Music for the music that we used in. Yes, the actual the streamed stuff that we're using streamed in the background yeah. here is from them. So, oh, yeah. um, huge shout out to that pa Patreon. Go get some sweet tunes. Yep, yep, yep. 
Anything else? I think that's it. I think we're good. Yeah, and unfortunately, we can't raid. raid. Oh, we can't. I don't. Yeah. Oh, that's Chris, right. Chris is our, our raider because uh, he has the account. But unfortunately, we our can't road. raid anyone unless. Yep. But tune in next week as they actually go into the tomb. Uh, I didn't oh, yeah. think it would take a whole real session to get here. I thought we would do like the learning demo last time and then like get to the tomb. Um, so this has been an interesting experience. I've really enjoyed this so far. It's been a fun yeah. system. I'm glad you're liking it. Yeah, All I'm right. like slowly understanding, like what we learned is now applied, and like, oh, I understand what I was doing because last session I was truly clicking buttons and hoping for the best. Right. <laughs> right. All right. All right. See y'all next time. See y'all next week. Bye. Next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for Bye. watching. Bye.